So welcome back and let's get back into our uh, import quota of a million genes being imposed. So we have an import quota of a million genes being imposed. So what happens is uh, to make this more easier, we already know that uh, that a million genes being imported is uh, achieved between 3.5 and 4.5. So we'll just take uh, 4.5 million genes and we'll go up this graph until we intersect this demand curve that I have here. We'll draw a straight line, call this line supply plus quota, and then we'll draw a dotted line across from the from this red dot that I have here and that price will be equal to seven dollars. So the price actually increased to seven dollars and the quantity produced in Canada increased and the quantity bought decreased from the world price. So imports actually decrease. So, so far so good. This is the same as what we had with the, with the tariff, except we're using quotas. So now that we got that done, now let's look at the winners, the losers, and the social loss from import quota. Again, Canadian government imposes import quota on imported genes. Four things can occur. Canadian consumers of genes lose. Canadian producers of genes gain. This is the part that's different. Importers of genes gain. And again, the last part is the same. Society loses, dead weight loss arises. So again, let's just take a look at this graph. This is the same graph that we have before. Total, short, total surplus with free international trade. And in this case, total surplus is maximized. Now we'll take a look at the import quota. The import quota raises the price of jeans to $7 and it decreases imports because before imports was this big, this big green arrow that we have here. And now it just decreased to this small little green arrow. So area B is actually transferred from consumer surplus to producer surplus because before our consumer surplus was this big green area, now it's just this smaller green area. So the importer's profit is actually D, well, this blue area that we have here. It's the same as before, we just took our tariff and now we call it the importer's profit. So the areas C and E is the loss of total surplus. It is the dead weight loss. Uh, that is created by the quota and again I would color this or highlight this gray just to show that it is the dead weight loss and again this is nothing new this is just pretty much this, exactly the same thing as we did for our tariffs except that now we're using a quota and the, the tax revenue that the government used to get is now the importers profit Everything else is still the same, I believe. Uh, let's just take a look at the above. Yep, so yeah, exactly. So this is what we got from tariffs. And comparing that to this, it looks exactly the same, except that this purple area that used to be became a blue area to show that it's import is profit. So now that's all for import quotas. Now let's take a look at uh, other import barriers and export subsidies. Other import barriers, examples of those include health, safety, and etc. that provides rev regulations that restrict international trade. And yeah, that's about it. I told you that before that I'm just gonna go through it really briefly and this is as brief as it gets. And export subsidies is, well, an export subsidy is a payment made by the government to a domestic producer of an exported good. Now, the pro of such a thing is that export subsidies bring gains to domestic producers. The con of such a thing is that it results in overproduction in the domestic economy and underproduction in the rest of the world. And in such a case, it creates a deadweight loss, which isn't really a good thing. Well, it's never a good thing. So now we're gonna get into the case against production or product protect or the case against protection and protection and relation to international trade. 
Even though free trade promotes prosperity for all countries, trade is restricted, and you may ask why. Now, there are two main arguments for restricting international trade, and that is the infant industry argument and the dumping argument. Now, the infant in industry argument, the idea behind that is that it is necessary to protect a new industry from import competition to enable it to grow into a mature industry that can compete in the world markets. The argument is based on the idea of dynamic comparative advantage, and I think I've went through this before in one of my videos, maybe not in this microeconomic series, but maybe in my macroeconomic series. But just to go through with you guys again, a dynamic comparative advantage is a comparative advantage that a person or country possesses as a result of having specialized in a particular activity and then due to learning by doing becomes a producer with the lowest opportunity cost. It's a mouthful, but all you need to know is that person or country can get better if they keep on doing the same thing over and over again and we call such a thing learning by doing we also call it specializing and when when they get better at doing the same thing that they're doing over and over again naturally they become better and better more efficient at doing it and then they become the producer with the lowest opportunity cost now learning by doing is uh, ex exactly what it means people become more productive in an activity learn just by repeatedly producing a particular good or service or by repeatedly doing the same activity over and over again. That is doing. Learning by doing is great for productivity growth, but that doesn't really justify protection. Now, the dumping argument happens when a foreign firm sells its exports at a lower price than its cost of production. The argument doesn't justify production because it is impossible to determine a firm's cost. It is hard to imagine a global monopoly. This only happens in the movies where one company or yeah, one company controls everything in the whole entire world. Like Resident Evil. Even if all domestic firms are taken out, alternatives still exist and we can assume that no company will be able to be the best at its own field and all the alternative fields. And if the market is truly a global monopoly, then it's better to regulate rather than restrict trade. But these facts aren't really that important. I can't imagine that your professors will actually test you to like state the facts that the state facts that that supports the argument that doesn't justify protection. What you need to know is that dumping you need to know the definition for dumping. That's all you should, guys should worry about, or the main thing that you guys should worry about. This is second nature. So just know that dumping happens when a foreign firm sells its exports at a lower price than its cost of production, then you should be good. But don't take my word for that. Now, other common arguments for production is that it saves jobs, it allows us to compete with cheap foreign labor, penalizes lax environments, environmental standards and prevents rich countries from exploiting developing countries and I will go through those four things in the next video please rate comment and subscribe if you haven't already and I'll see you guys in the next video thanks for watching